Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us for the Word of Faith Netcast. This time around, I tell you, we've got some good things to be uh, sharing with you this week and also sharing about some of the great things that are going on uh, in the body of Christ and through our SpeakFaith.tv project. I'm really excited about where that's going and what's happening there. Um, I know there are a lot of people, a lot of believers that are very concerned about the recent election and uh, it went away you were not expecting it to go and I understand that and I I can I can sympathize with the folks that are uh, feeling down feeling dejected but I'm here to tell you that God is still on his throne amen the Bible is still the Word of God the Holy Ghost is still within us as believers and is working with us the angelic hosts are still involved. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We are going to be fine. As a matter of fact, the church is coming into some days, I believe, of glory. And uh, as the world gets worse, it just makes the church shine that much brighter with the hope and the uh, help that comes from God that's available through his word to his people. So what you need to do is have people see you continuing to be blessed, continuing to prosper, continuing to be in health, and uh, not have to rely on the government, you know, as the big Santa Claus that's going to give them a lot of stuff and keep them from going under. No, God supplies all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? So, it's God, not the government, that provides the answers. Okay? So don't let the recent election issue <laughs> get you down. I know there's disappointment. I was disappointed. But disappointment should not lead to discouragement. I made this point on the Word of Faith uh, broadcast radio program that we do for Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org. And uh, on that program, I made this statement. Discouragement, dis, of course, meaning, uh, you know, the opposite or antithesis of, and then courage, the word courage. So discouragement is to lose courage. Well, what happens when you lose courage? You get into fear. What is fear? Fear is the reciprocal of faith. Amen? So if fear is the reciprocal of faith, you don't want to be discouraged because being discouraged or deprived of your courage is going to put you in a position where you're going to operate by fear and not by faith. And you need to be operating by faith in these days. I'm telling you, this is a day and an hour that we must, must operate by faith. Amen? All right. Well, a couple of things I want to announce to you. We have received permission from Agape Faith Church, where J.B. Whitfield is pastor, to have J.B. Whitfield and his messages, Sunday morning services, available through speakfaith.tv. I have submitted that code for approval to uh, Roku, and as soon as they approve it and it becomes official, then the speakfaith.tv Roku channel will also include Pastor J.B. Whitfield from Clemens, North Carolina. They have an excellent church there, Agape Faith Church. If you're in the Clemens, North Carolina area, I encourage you to go check out Agape Faith Church if you're looking for a church home. Oh my, they're doing some great things there. So that is a tremendous addition to our SpeakFaith.tv lineup. Now it's not quite there yet. It's in the beta. Okay, the SpeakFaith.tv beta channel has that feed already, but it will be released soon to the full 
official channel, all right? Now you say, what's the difference between the two? Well, the official channel is in the channel store. And by the way, that's some other important news for you. If you go to roku.com, R-O-K-U.com, one of the items there on their website is search channels. If you search channels and you type in Speak Faith and hit return on that, you will find speakfaith.tv as part of the channel store. Now that's the official channel, all right? That channel is the one that is going to be updated soon to include uh, J.B. Whitfield and Agape Faith Church. The beta channel is available if you would like to get kind of an early view <laughs> of speakfaith.tv, what's coming, then you can go to the beta channel and put that into your Roku box. You simply go to your Roku account, all right, and then type in uh, or select the option for adding a private channel, and then use the private channel code SFTV Beta, B E T A. I'm going to put it here up on the screen so you can see that code. Enter that code, and then you can get the SpeakFaith.tv Beta channel and kind of see what's coming in the official channel. See what I'm saying? All right, so uh, do that. My, it's, oh, I'm telling you, we got some good things coming. So I want to encourage you along that line. Well, I got my tablet here with me, and we left off last time talking about, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry it's been so long since we've had a netcast. It has been a while. I'm, I'm going to try to try to find more time. Time, time, time. That's what we need. <laughs> you know, we need to redeem the time. Amen. The scripture says to, to do that, to redeem the time. Well, I, I got to find some more time to redeem to do the show. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we were talking about what are you thinking? What is it going on in that head up there? <laughs> All right. What are you thinking? Well, let's pick up where we left off. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 12. Beginning in verse 1, I beseech, remember we said that was beg, I beg you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Some translations say spiritual service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now we made the point, the statement, that this is not three types of will of God. God's will is good, God's will is acceptable, God's will is perfect. All right. God's will is God's will. He doesn't have, he's not schizophrenic. He doesn't have a different will for different situations. You know, a good will, an acceptable will, and a perfect will. No, no, that's not how it works. He's using descriptors to describe what the will of God is. It is good. It is acceptable. It is perfect. All right? So I want to make that clear because a lot of people get off on tangents and strange doctrines come about because of misunderstandings of that. Verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you. So he's talking to Christians. Now it's important to point that out because not all men have faith. All right, the Bible makes that very clear. Not all men have faith. Well, if not all men have faith, and Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, ye are of your father the devil, then there must be some that have faith. Well, who has faith? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So faith comes when you hear the gospel preached. Matter of fact, if read in context there, the context of that scripture is how shall they hear unless there's a preacher? How shall the preacher preach except they be sent? Amen? And so, who hath believed our report, he said. Matter of fact, uh, let me just go back to um, Romans chapter 10, because I want to read that literally in context. All right? And I feel like if I don't read it in context, uh, you, you won't fully understand what we're talking about there. So give me a second here to pull that up on the tablet. Um, here we go. Matter of fact, I'm just going to read. I hadn't planned to do this, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and read uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 8, because praise the Lord, that's an important scripture. But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, 
even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. This is the word of faith, netcast. We are preaching to you, ministering to you from word of faith ministries. You say, Dr. Bill, why the emphasis on word of faith? That phrase, word of faith. Because Paul said the word of faith is what he, what he preached. And it's the word of faith that gets the word concerning faith across to you. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Where does faith come from? What is this issue about all men having faith or not? Well, here we go. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So how do you get born again? Call upon the name of the Lord. Believe God raised Jesus from the dead. Confess him as Lord. That's what we just read, right? You do that and you're saved. The word saved there is the Greek word sozo. S-O-Z-O -O is the transliteration. It means, as you've heard me say so many times before, saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, and delivered from all temporal evil. Amen? All right. Here's what I wanted to show you. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? That's what we were talking about earlier. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Just because you heard the gospel preached doesn't mean you're instantly born again. You have to obey. You have to obey the gospel. Oh, Dr. Bill, I thought we were just covered by grace. No, you have to obey. That doesn't sound very greasy grace, does it? <laughs> no. You have to obey what the Word of God says. You have to obey the Scriptures. Here it says, they've not all obeyed the Gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who has believed our report? you got to believe it. Not enough for me to teach it, preach it. you got to believe it. Alright. Verse 17. This is the one we were talking about started us off. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now that verse of scripture is a little blind to us in the King James. Let's pick it apart like we do so many times in the Greek. So then faith cometh by hearing. The word hearing is the Greek word akoe. A-K-O-E is the transliteration. Akoe. And akoe by the word of God. Akoe here in the Greek means more than the mere sense of hearing. It's not just having ears on the side of your head that's important here. More than the mere sense of hearing. You've got to hear and receive and believe the teaching. Now in context with what he's saying earlier, doesn't that make sense? How shall they believe unless they hear? How shall they hear unless somebody preach? How shall they preach unless somebody sent? But they haven't all believed our report or our preaching, right? That's why I said you got to obey. You got to believe. So, what does that mean? It means that a koe here is hearing, receiving, and accepting with your whole heart the teaching. Then faith comes. Faith is a supernatural force. Faith, the force of faith, is what God used to create this whole universe. But that won't come until you hear, you receive, you believe, you obey the scripture, you're born again, then faith comes. Faith is a gift from God, but it comes by this process. So, at some point in time, you heard the gospel preached. 
You received it in your heart. You believed it in your heart. You acted on it and confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord. You believe God raised him from the dead without any natural evidence. You believed that. When you did that, you got born again. Amen? You got born again. When you got born again, now you are of faith. All right, let's go back to Romans chapter 12, where we left off. Okay, let's, let's start back at verse 2. Be not conformed to this world system, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you believers, every man who has heard the word preached, received it in their heart, believed in their heart, confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, believed that God has raised him from the dead, that makes them among you. That makes them believers. Do you see that? That's the difference. That's the among you he's talking about here. Every one, every man among you. Not to think more of himself than he ought to. I'm paraphrasing a bit here, so I want to make a point. Not to think more highly of himself than he ought to. See, there's a lot of people, I'm God's gift to preaching. You know, no, I know, talk about me personally, I'm not God's gift to teaching and preaching. God anointed me with a supernatural gift in the ministry to be a teacher. The Holy Ghost is the teacher of the church. I'm here to make my mouth available. That's it. You know, I don't think of myself more highly than I ought to think. Because <laughs> it's not me. It's just, he's got my mouth, he can use it. All right? I'm just an instrument. So I don't think of myself more highly than I ought to think. Amen. That's true humility, is understanding it's not on you. And that to me is freeing. See, what are you thinking? How are you thinking about yourself, for instance? Amen. That's what we're talking about here. How do you think about yourself? Do you think of yourself more lowly than you ought to think? Because some of you do not constantly remind yourself that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not because of you, but because of what Jesus did for you. But you are still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Then there's some of you that think, I'm God's gift or whatever. Well, see, now you're thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to think. So how should you think? This is the key. What are you thinking? You need to think soberly. What does it mean to think soberly? With a calm, rational mind. Amen? Based on the scripture. That's how you ought to think. Now, if you do that, everything's going to be fine. If you start thinking yourself more highly than you ought to think, you're in trouble. You start thinking yourself more lowly than you ought to think. You're in trouble. Soberly. That's how you ought to think. Let's read it. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man among you the measure of faith. God's dealt to every Christian the measure measure of faith. Not a measure, the measure. And we gave this example before. I've done it before. I'll do it again, I'm sure. And that is when somebody's born into this earth, all things being equal, they have the same number of muscles as somebody who, uh, you know, somebody else that was born in the earth. But when they grow up and they're fully mature, you know, two young men standing beside each other, one skinny as a rail, couldn't lift a hundred pounds, bless his heart. The other guy, muscles bulging out all over the place and can press 350 pounds. They both have the same number of muscles. The measure of muscles is the same. What's the difference? The difference is development. 
one has developed his muscles through exercise, through use. They develop their muscles. And now they are stronger in their muscles than the other guy. All right, now let's take that over in the spiritual realm. Two Christians, both of them get born again. All right, they're both starting off together. Let's say they got born again in the same revival meeting. All right, now one spends years in the world, conform to the world, talking what the world talks, doing what the world does, just basically ignores church, ignores fellow Christians and fellowship, ignores his Bible. The other, born again at the same time, same revival meeting, he gets his Bible, he digs into it, he studies it with all his heart, he prays and asks the Lord for revelation knowledge. He goes to good meetings preaching the uncompromising word of faith. He listens to, uh, you know, in my day, what we, we call them teaching tapes. We'd slap in a cassette tape, you know, and listen to them. Or all the old reel-to-reels if you go back far enough. But these days, MP3 players, you can just put it in your iPod or, you know, iPad or your tablet or whatever and listen to the MP3s. Or they watch, you know, streaming video off their Roku box. For, through speakfaith.tv or they listen to Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org, but they're constantly surrounded by the Word of God. They're constantly hearing good messages. They're traveling all over, you know, in my case it'd be the southeastern part of North Carolina, travel all over to hear good preaching. What's going to happen? One has developed their faith, one has not. Now, confronted with a situation where they've got to use their faith, Who's going to be ahead? The guy who's ignored the Word of God and, and, and just conformed himself to the world or the guy who spent time, effort, energy to develop his faith so that when he speaks from what he has received, it comes out with power. That's the difference. And the people that look at other Christians and say, I don't understand why he succeeds and I don't. Now you do. Amen. Now you understand why some succeed and some don't. Because with the measure that you meet, <laughs> it's measured to you again. You need to obey. You need to put some effort into things. You need to act on the Word of God. Amen. And the only way you can act on the Word of God is to receive from the Word of God. Amen. You've got to do what's at hand to do to get into the Word. Now, I just named off all these opportunities you have. Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org, SpeakFaith.tv. Uh, you know, Roku box is only about 49 bucks these days. You buy one, you put it on your TV, hook it up to your internet connection, and you can get absolutely free, get some of the best teaching there is from SpeakFaith.tv, from Kenneth Copeland's Roku channel, from Brother Hagen's Roku channel, lots of resources. Internet, you can listen to Brother uh, Copeland's messages right there off the internet. You can listen to our messages right off the internet. All kinds of opportunities you have to hear the Word of God. Are you listening? Some of you are. You're watching this netcast. Amen. But are you availing yourself of the opportunities you have to hear the Word of God preached in an uncompromising fashion? I'm not talking about gloom and, dare and d despair and <laughs> gloom and doom and <laughs> all the mess that you may hear preached somewhere. Matter of fact, if you're going to a church that's preaching that mess, mm, get out of that church. You say, oh, Dr. Bill, you shouldn't tell people to leave a church. I'll tell anybody to leave a church any day of the week if it's preaching unbelief. You need to go somewhere preaching the uncompromising word of faith. <laughs> My. Anyway. And you know, there's even a scripture. I, I, I'm getting a little, I'm, I'm meddling. I've done gone to meddling, all right? <laughs> but here, I'm just going to meddle a little here, a little while here. There is a scripture that says, do not give your tithes to the dead. All right? There's some dead churches out there. 
And there's some that Ichabod is written over their door. That means the glory hath departed. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't tithe to the dead and don't go sit in church with the dead. <laughs> Woo! Done gone to meddling, Dr. Bill. <laughs> yes, I have. But I'm telling you, this is exactly what we're talking about. You're going to have to surround yourself with the uncompromising word of faith message. You're going to have to go to a good church. I, I named at least two, well, one at least today. I'll name another one here. And that's our church that, that I attend. I'm not the minister there. Uh, but I attend a church, Word uh, our ministry is Word of Faith Ministry. I attended church, Faith and Victory Church, in Greensboro, North Carolina, where Pastor Ed Taylor is pastor. Their website is fvc.org. Now, I can highly recommend that church. I go there. That's my church. Again, it's where I attend. It's where I'm a member. And I occasionally get to teach. <laughs> but Pastor Ed is delivering the uncompromised Word of Faith every single Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and even other services. Amen. There's a Tuesday night prayer, you know, and praise the Lord. Something going on at Faith and Victory all the time. So, excellent, excellent church in Greensboro. I mentioned earlier uh, uh, Agape Faith Church in Clemens, North Carolina. Pastor J.B. Whitfield. It's a going on there. All right? So, two churches. And, you know, Pastor Larry Westforth, praise the Lord. Down uh, in eastern North Carolina. Excellent church. There are all these places that are out there where you can hear the uncompromised word of faith message. And I could go on and on and on and name a bunch of other folks. Basically, the folks that are on Word of Faith Radio, amen. <laughs> you need to be listening to them. You need to be going to those churches. And wherever you are in the world, I can probably find a church that you can get into that's preaching the word of faith. If you want to send me an email and let me know where you are, I'll try to find one and send it to you. But... Just be led by the Holy Ghost and go to a church preaching the uncompromised word of faith. Amen. All right. By the way, my email address, if you do want to write me, is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Okay? You can send me an email at that address, and I will try to find you a word of faith church. You can also write me here at my regular mailing address which is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. Encourage you to write me there. And, of course, I'll give you that email address again, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-F-M dot O-R-G. Take advantage of all these resources, preaching the uncompromised Word of Faith. Pray for our country. Don't forget that. Pray for the President. I know some of you said, but I didn't vote for him. Pray for the president. You got to pray that the Lord will change his heart, change his mind, get him in line with the word of God on some things. All right? He's our president. We need to be praying for him. All right? Praise the Lord. And don't get mad. Just pray. That's what you need to do. Join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.